At a hastily arranged press conference earlier today, top Chinese officials announced they're going to go crazy reducing interest rates all over the place. This is one of those Oprah me moments. You get a rate cut. You get a rate cut. Everyone gets a rate cut. Just like the Federal Reserve, the Swiss National Bank, the Bank of Canada, and the ECB, China's PBOC is just the latest central bank to start panicking over worsening conditions. Unlike those others, China's central bank didn't bother pretending this was no big deal. In fact, that was the entire point. By cutting practically everything they had, officials were explicitly trying to send a message that Beijing isn't fooling around any longer. This time, they mean it. And the message was received. The media was all over it. A few markets have soared in response, as they always do in the short run. Governments claim to hate speculators, but the truth is, it's only speculators who buy into this nonsense. And make no mistake, this is all pure theater. China is the absolute perfect example of this, how rate cuts don't ever work. They don't do anything, and the proof is all over the Chinese economy and financial system. Authorities have to make a big show of it because a big show is all it is. One headline said, China will unleash stimulus package to revive the economy and markets. Well, what about the last one? Or the one before that? How about the 10 other stimulus packages that were going to revive the economy, but never did? The worse it gets in China, the more the Chinese cut rates. And the Chinese just cut rates by a lot, which tells you what exactly about how things are going over there. So we'll go over what authorities just announced. We'll go over the knee-jerk reaction in certain markets. And most of all, we'll go through the evidence that shows this is all just theater. Rate cuts are a reaction to serious weakness. And the Chinese just cut a lot of rates. Are you listening, Mr. Powell? We knew something was up yesterday when the Chinese authorities hastily arranged and announced a press conference for earlier this morning Chinese time. And even just after that, they immediately lowered this 14-day repo rate, which is not a critical rate, but it at least... I think it was intentional in getting people to realize that what was coming in this press conference was going to be more of the same. And it pretty much guaranteed that there was going to be more announced rate cuts from officials, including Pan Gong Sheng, who's the head of the PBOC. And the timeline wasn't clear, nor was it really the purpose. The purpose here was just to announce to the public what it is that authorities are going to do and the fact, more than anything, that they're going to do a lot. It starts with the MLF, or the Medium Term Lending Facility, which has been downgraded. The MLF used to be, for the last decade or so, it had been the PBOC's main lever of communicating policy. It's not really so much a monetary policy tool as it is, as it was a communication tool. So they're going to lower the MLF by 30 basis points. The seven-day repo rate, which is going to be China's main communication and policy lever, that one they're going to cut by 20 basis points when markets were and observers had been expecting maybe a couple 10 basis point rate cuts. Pan Gongsheng said, no, we're going to cut by 20 basis points right away. It's going to go from 1.7% down to 1.5%. The one that everybody always talks about, the RRR, it's the proportion of reserves that Chinese banks have to hold in reserve. And every time the authorities announce cutting the RRR, which they do quite a bit, especially over the last dozen years or so, which should tell you what we're talking about here, every time they cut the RRR, we hear all these stories about how it's going to unleash a tidal wave of cash into the economy. Money is now freed up to flow, to be relent throughout the Chinese system, and it never actually happens. But Pan Gongsheng announced that the RRR will be reduced by 50 basis points. For large banks, it'll be cut from 10% down to 9.5%. And they may actually cut again 25 to 50 basis points at some other time later on this year. So major cuts to the RRR, which is the centerpiece of all of this announcing business. Pan also noted that the loan prime rates will, re will be reduced by between 20 and 25 basis points. He didn't say which one. He didn't say when. Nor did he specify whether it was the one-year loan prime rate or the five-year loan prime rate. The one-year loan prime rate is more, is more applicable to corporate lending, corporate borrowing, whereas the five-year is tied to mortgage rates. So it's likely to be at least the five-year, if not both of them, and probably closer to 25, given everything that we're talking about here. They also announced a bunch of other measures too, including the fact that the People's Bank of China 
is offering to cover 100% of loans to local governments who are buying unsold houses. What had been announced previously is that the PBOC would cover 60% of the loans at low cost interest rates um, to buy these unsold houses, which local governments really don't want to do because they're not selling a lot of houses and land. They're not selling a lot of land because, because of land sales going crashing through the floor. They don't have the ability to spend a whole lot of money on a whole lot of anything. And they really don't want to get deeper indebted, especially to central authorities like the PBOC, given the uncertainty about everything. So up until now, the 60% coverage didn't really work. No surprise. And now the PBOC is raising that to 100%. They also announced a little, another rescue for China's stock market. Isn't that funny? The, Chinese stock, the Shanghai SSE bounced off of its previous February low of 2,700 on the index. This was a couple of weeks ago, anticipating exactly what the authorities announced today. Another 800 billion yuan thereabouts for a some kind of stock market rescue, plus the announcement of maybe setting up some kind of market stabilization fund. So we got tons of rate cuts, tons of rescues, not quite the big bazooka necessarily of fiscal spending, but from the monetary side, basically everything that if you were an economist, you could possibly want, or if you were a market speculator. The Shanghai SSC up 4%, more than 4% on the day that stocks in, in Shanghai and China, the major index there. Like I said, it's up since middle of September when it hit 2,700, because it seemed like the, uh, stock speculators were expecting authorities to come out with something in the near-term future. Copper prices, for example, those are up to 449 per pound at the CME. That's 3.24% higher on the day. No surprise there because copper has been beaten down. And there's always this speculative impulse to buy every stimulus announcement because you never know, maybe this time it will actually work when every single time up until now, it hasn't worked. Say, along the same lines of copper, steel prices in China, steel rebar futures in Shanghai, they're up 100 CNY per ton to 31.34. That's 3.4% today. So a similar reaction to copper that may, maybe this time it will bear some fruit because it never actually does any other time. And this is something, by the way, I went into much more detail in my DDA, deep dive analysis, last night because there's actually quite a bit more to this story. Not necessarily about the rate cuts, but deeper moves and changes in the very structure of Chinese banking and not just the central bank. And that's, you know, this is fall, so that means that we're going to have a fall sale on the deep dive analysis as long with everything else that we do at Eurodollar University, including our memberships that we have available. There's well over 100 hours of videos and material where we talk about what is money, what are the curves, and I'm just about to publish the next segment in our basic series on interest rate swaps. So we've got a fall sale coming up, information on the deep dive analysis, our membership, plus don't forget the daily briefing. That's at our website, eurodollar.university. Sometimes it's hard to tell who has a bigger reaction to these stimulus announcements. Is it the speculators in places like Copper or Shanghai Steel? Or is it economists who get quoted in the Western media? Because some of their responses to what, just was, what was just announced today were practically orgasmic. Here, I'll give you an example. This will be a day to remember for China's monetary policy. The People's Bank of China unleashed a barrage of measures from cuts to interest rates and reserve requirements to making central bank funding available for investors to purchase stocks. Each individual step on its own is significant. Delivering them all at once is highly unusual and speaks to the urgency felt in Beijing to head off deflationary risk and get growth on track for this year's meager 5% target. And th this was from Chang Shu, who's the chief economist chief Asia economist at Bloomberg. And they estimate that the impact will be, hold on to your hat, around two tenths of a percent to 2024 growth. So they get all excited about all of these rate cuts and you have to ask why? Why do they get excited about something that never actually works? In fact, you can see in all of the, Chinese, the evidence in the Chinese system that rate cuts are at best irrelevant. That, this applies not just to the current period, but also to the period before 2008. We'll focus here on the RRR cuts because those are the ones that make people so darn excited. As one media outlet put it, 
China's central bank will cut bank's reserve requirement ratio by 50 basis points in the near future, freeing up 1 trillion won, or the equivalent of $142 billion, for new lending. And if that's the case, then China must be thoroughly inflationary over the last dozen years because over that dozen years, they have cut the RRR from 21.5%, the rate applied to big banks, all the way down to 10% before we even get to today. So they have more than halved the reserve requirement and there's been no economic renaissance, revival, there's been no inflation, there's been only failure and more deflation. We're talking about a dozen years. None of these rate cuts work, and that's true outside of China, as I keep telling you. It's true of Federal Reserve rate cuts, ECB rate cuts. It doesn't matter where, but China is the absolute perfect example of how, how ridiculous this all is, how much it is just pure theater. At most, you can say rate cuts are a reaction to weakness. So when we see a central bank cutting, all we know is that the central bank sees that weakness and actually acknowledges and appreciates what it actually means. But let's go through the evidence. Let's measure the RRR rate, the reserve requirement, versus Chinese loans, the outstanding stock of RMB loans in the Chinese system. And if you go back to before 2008, what you see is that Chinese authorities really hiked the RRR starting from the middle of 2006 because of all the money that was pouring into China from the outside, the booming Chinese economy as the late euro dollar period hit its absolute apex. Everything was going right for China, including the fact that banks had so much, so much cash coming in, they were at risk of having too much. So trying to get a handle on inflation before it really got out of control in China, Chinese authorities raised the RRR from 7.5% in the middle of 2006 all the way to 17.5% by the middle of 2008. And did it work? Did it restrain credit creation and the economy and consumer prices? Of course not. Loan growth went, to, went from around 15% year over year to 18% year over year. It actually accelerated during this period. Consumer prices went from 2 to 3% year over year changes to up to 8%. 2007. Now, the loan growth and consumer prices began to slow down in November 2007, but that wasn't because the Chinese authorities raised the RRR. That was because China was experiencing its part of the first half of the Great Knot Recession and the global knot financial crisis. And it took the PBOC until the middle of 2008 to realize that circumstances had changed. Around the world, the global economy was experiencing a nasty contraction and it was impacting China too. So in response to that weakness, the PBOC lowered the RRR in 2008 back down to 15.5%. And then on the other side of the 2008-2009 Great Knot Recession, they began raising it again in January 2010, getting it all the way up to 215 by June of 2011, just in time for euro dollar number two to strike. So RMB loan growth slowed from September 2012 as euro dollar number two really started to make a big impact all the way until August of 2014, even though the PBOC had cut the RRR rate starting in 2011. Didn't have much impact and it didn't have much impact over the next 12, 13 years. Ever since then, it's just been downhill in, both, in terms of both loan growth, economic growth, as well as rate cuts in the RRR and other rates that simply follow weakness. Every time loan growth slows down, authorities eventually respond, recognizing that weakness by cutting the RRR rate a little more. And the media goes wild with all the money that's available to be relented in the economy, and it never gets relented in the economy. Everything only continues to slow. By the time we get to 2021, the RRR is down to 12.5%. And so over the last several years, since July of 2021, the PBOC has been lowering the RRR rate down from 12.5% for large banks to 10%. And yet, RMB loan growth continues to slow to record low rates after record low after record low after record low. So what good is cutting the RRR rate? It is, as I said, at best irrelevant. And you can see that in real economic data too. We look at fixed asset investment, which is heavily reliant on funding conditions, especially on the private side. 
And just like with our R&B loan growth and bank lending, before 2008, fixed asset investment surged and kept going, even as authorities raised the RRR by an enormous amount in that period, 2006 to 2008. FAI continues to surge and keeps going until the global recession develops. And then on the other side of it, when it became clear that China was not going to escape the silent depression, as many had thought, including Chinese authorities, fixed asset investment has only slowed down since euro dollar number two in 2000, 2011, and the RRR just simply follows it lower. Whether it's private FAI or total FAI doesn't actually matter. Weakness continues to develop. The economy slows down. Investment slows down. Authorities respond to it by lowering interest rates. Lower inter lowering interest rates doesn't work. The economy slows more. Authorities respond to it by lowering interest rates even further. And round and round we go. Everything slows down and rates go down, which, by the way, is how interest rates are supposed to work. Lower interest rates mean lower growth and in inflation expectations. And this is just central banks' way, in their own way, of reflecting that same thing. And you can see it here with GDP in China. There's no slowdown in GDP while the RRR is being raised 2006, 2007 into 2008. And then more importantly, on the other side in 2011, as I said, China be proves to be not immune to the silent depression. So from 2011 forward, GDP continues to slow down and the PBOC chases that slowing growth by, rate, by lowering the RRR at various points along the way. In fact, the RRR reductions correspond exactly with our euro dollar cycles. But when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. All authorities have is either interest rate policy or balance sheet policy, and neither one of them prove effective. But in terms of interest rate policy, if all you see is weakness and all you have is interest rate policies, then you have to lower interest rates in response to weakness. That's why rates in China only go in one direction. You ever notice that? They never get raised. They only go in one direction because China's economy continues to slowly, slowly, slowly degrade. What we're seeing, though, over the last year, really the last six, seven months, is a higher chance, especially from the markets, the bond market, pricing that the slow degradation in China's economy actually might be picking up and speeding up raising a whole bunch of really negative possible potential. And that's what Chinese authorities are actually responding to. They see that weakness too. They see the rising deflationary risks that aren't necessarily just risks anymore. And they feel we, we got to do something, but all we have is rate cut theater. So like Oprah, Pan Gong Shang got a rate cut over here, rate cut over there, rate cut everywhere. Speculators in certain markets bought it. The media went crazy. Economists were absolutely ecstatic and it won't make a damn bit of difference. Rate cuts are a reaction to serious weakness. So the only thing to note in all of this is Chinese just did a lot of rate cuts. So what does that tell you about how serious the weakness must be? Part of this Oprah-esque rate cutting is in response to the credit statistics that the Chinese central bank just put out recently. And I went over those and how grim those are in the video link below. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Check out Eurodollar University's fall sale upcoming in the next couple of days. Huge thank you to Eurodollar University members and subscribers. And until next time, take care.